I believe I've made a big mistake four years ago when I started watercoloring. Not that. That was the mistake. But the mistake I made was to not play enough with the actual colors. Uh, not understanding my paints and what they can do. And I do believe now, because I have gone through the exercise, that it is the foundation to a successful watercolor painting. I think it's more true with watercolor than any other medium because of the translucent quality of these paints, which means that with one color, you can get such a range of values just by adding water. And so a few weeks ago, uh, I was working on a painting and the color combination that I had chosen was fine. There was nothing wrong with it, but I just couldn't get the colors to work well for the painting. And I was wondering why. And so out of desperation, I just started with one of the colors of that combination and slowly creating a gradient by uh, starting with the heavily pigmented color and then gradually adding more water and making these rectangles. And not only was this highly satisfying, <laughs> and I know a lot of you enjoy that exercise as well because I've had comments on Instagram telling me that they get satisfaction in working this way building a collection of some sort, I guess, of colors. And it's also very good for brush control because I was trying to make these rectangles as evenly as possible without going crazy, really. But uh, so that was also it's, it's kind of like a double exercise in a way because uh, you can practice brush control and you start understanding your colors more. And in my paint palette, I have all kinds of brands. I get this question a lot. People are telling me, what brand do you work with? I work with anything, as long as it's higher than artist um, student grade. So I have craft grade, I have artisan grade, and I also have professional grade or artist grade. And that will also um, influence the result that you get with your colors because a hand mixed color reacts differently than uh, let's say one that is made professionally with you know they're not hand mold so they're machine made so if you're like me and you have a paint palette that has different not only colors but brands this is also a very important exercise to go through because while I was doing this swatching I realized that um, two of my colors when they were drying or even in the the pans themselves one of the colors kept um, generating this chalky whitish color um, not the first color from the top the second one and normally I would look at a paint like this and I would say, oh, that's no good because it's separating because probably there's some additive to it. However, when doing this swatching, I realized that this color can be fun mixed with another color because it provides a beautiful pastel look. So I would have probably disregarded this color altogether either I not done this chart. So this is basically what I did for every color. And then the fun started. I started mixing them together. And when I say there is no end to this, there is no end. I ran out of room and I wish I had taken a bigger page or paper, but I did it in my pocket doodler book. And so I have sped this up because otherwise this video would have been very long, but it's essentially the same that I did for every color is I started with the mass stone of a color or meaning the, the most pigmented color and then gradually add more water and more water until I got like the lightest possible value of each color. And then I started mixing them with each other. 
and that was quite interesting. I also introduced sepia into the mix at some point with the teal and the blue and that gave me quite surprising results. It almost turned into a gray color, which is not bad at all. I really, I really like the colors that it produced.
once I was done just watching, I added the uh, some notes. So I recorded the names of each of the paints, the brand as well. I think that's very important as well. And of course, I couldn't help myself. So I added some doodling because why not? It's just way cuter with doodling. And the way I look at this, it's almost like color theory, but fun. <laughs> Because I don't know if you like me, but whenever I hear those two words, I, I, I kind of shy away from this because it sounds so scientific. And I know color theory is important. I get that. And I do have, you know, the little wheel that helps me understand about complementary colors and tertiary and whatnot. And that's a great tool. But there's something to be said about working with your own colors, what you have in your stash, and actually doing the action of mixing and creating all these gradients. In my book, this is a must. So I hope this was helpful and I hope this is inspiring you to create your own charts. Let me know how it went uh, in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have discovered any wonderful color mixes that'd be great and i thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon